if we accept that thinking, that if we're, if we, we, we gotta be hard in our business dealings, in our relationship uh, dealings, in, in every aspect of our life, if we adopt that as our way of thinking, then guess what you won't do? You won't be a blessing to somebody just because.
5th chapter, verses 22 through 23. Again, we should, we should remember, uh, have this memorized by now. We've, all, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and so we want to start again with this particular verse. Um, the Bible says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. The fruit of the, of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. That's what we've been talking about. The fruit of the Spirit are characteristics or attributes that should be active and evident and growing in the life of every believer. The, the, the genuine, sincere working of these fruit, these characteristics can only be produced when we align ourselves with the Spirit of God and allow Him to work in us and through us and make the necessary changes because when we're when we're operating in the in the fruit of the Spirit, there are probably gonna be some things that have to change. Because it's it's our nature to do and to walk in everything opposite, you know, uh, of, of of the uh, of these fruit. When you have time, if you uh, in your own personal Bible study, if you look at just Galatians, the, the fifth chapter, just a couple of verses up verse in verse 19. Read that when you when you get home. There are about 17, 16 or 17 things that Paul says that are part of the of the sinful nature of the of our flesh that that we we sometimes in, in, engage in. We have to be delivered from, we have to be freed from. And the good news is, is because of what Jesus did on the cross for us, we no longer have to walk in that in that list. We should be operating and walking by the Spirit so that He will produce in us the fruit of the Spirit. Then, as you align yourself with the Holy Spirit, because this is about Him, that's why it says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. You can't overemphasize that. You cannot love people the way God wants you to love people on your own. You won't have the joy of the Lord to, to, to be your strength on your own. You, you can't have, have peace and, 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 and patience. Patience. You can't have patience in, in your life without the Holy Spirit. You won't be kind. Goodness and, 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 and faithfulness, that's all because of the Holy Spirit. When you align yourself with Him, then people will see the joy. They'll see the love. They'll see the peace. They'll see the patience. They'll see the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness. And, and when they observe you in various situations, you will be doing and saying what the Lord has you to do and to say. That's why I'm grateful, and I, I you know, the, of the testimonies that I've gone for when we're on our jobs, mm -hmm. and, and and random people just say, you know, hey, God bless you, you touched my life. That's what it's all about. You can't, you can't, you, that that doesn't happen. If we don't allow the Holy Spirit to produce this type of fruit in us, it's all about Him producing it in us. And so today we're going to talk about the last two fruit of the Spirit, gentleness and self-control. Gentleness. Gentleness. Let's start with gentleness. So the, the, the actual word for gentleness is, is, is really meekness. Meekness. Sometimes the word uh, humble is used as a synonym for, for a synonym for, for meekness. Mildness is a is another word that's used to describe meekness. So just a just a, a kind of like a working definition of, of gentleness or, or meekness. It's 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 softness, it's mildness, softness or mildness of temper instead of outburst of rage. Again, in your birth, in your personal Bible study, if you look in that list, beginning at verse 17, outburst of rage is something that, that happens for somebody who's not being led by the Spirit. You just fly off the handle. Uh, meekness is, is the counterpart to that. Uh, meekness is submission to God's will without complaining or murmuring. It's, 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 he tells you to do something. You know that he has best, he has your best interest at heart. 
He tells you to go here, go there. You know that the Bible says that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called to according to his purpose. You know that and you believe that, so you know that it's going to work out for your good. So no matter what he tells you to do, you do it without complaining. I so said that's 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 how a meek person operates. Meekness involves surrendering control to God because you know what God says is right. Meekness joyfully accepts that you are no longer the boss of your life. Because that, because you understand that there's somebody that can do it better. See, I know that that that, that somebody could, could could work my life and, and, and do it better. God and Rita. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody that's more qualified. A meek person will understand that. They they they, they get it. Then they joyfully accept. They joyfully accept that you're not the boss of your life, right? You're not in control. Meekness is lowliness. Watch this. Meekness allows somebody else to shine. Allows somebody else to shine. It's a willingness to, to, willingness to share, uh, share with and to sacrifice on behalf of others. Couple more. Meekness, a meek person has a soft heart as opposed to a hard heart that can't receive from the Lord. <laughs> a meek person yields and submits to Jesus simply because Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Christ. A meek person willfully yields to Him. Now, that's, 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 that's all uh, the working definition of somebody who is meek, somebody who is gentle. But the world's view, when it comes to the world and, and, and the world's viewpoint, someone who is described as meek, as far as the world is concerned, will more than likely be viewed as spineless. Think about that. Timid. Soft, even wimpy. So if I describe, it's like, oh yeah, there's, there's Nate. He's, he's a meek person. The world's gonna be looking at him like, um, he's kind of probably needs to man up a little bit. You know, that's that's the world's view of somebody who is meek. It, it, it's, it's, it's so it's, it's distorted. It's, it's, it's distorted. Uh, the, the world says this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Over two in bringing in people you know in your life. <laughs> hey, man. Just kidding. Just yeah, kidding. Y'all, y'all, y'all rolled with the punches. Then, you know? <laughs> Meekness, as, as it relates to the world, is miscategorized as weakness. I even hate that they that that, that they that they whine. You know, meekness is, is because the world thinks that that's that's a catchphrase of the world. Meekness is weakness. The, the world tells you to to that you have to be strong and you have to kind of go for yours and that type of that type of thing. But meekness, gentleness, humbleness, the, that type of the, the meekness that the Holy Spirit produces in us, it's far from weakness. It's far from it. It's not weakness at all. Notice Paul's instructions in uh, 1 Timothy 6, chapter, uh, verse 11. He's talking to his, his son in the ministry, Timothy. He says, but you, Timothy, are a man of God, so run from all these evil things. Pursue righteousness and a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Meekness. He's telling him to pursue that, right? The world will stop and say, you know, uh, I don't know about that because, I, you know, Timothy, Timothy I, don't, I don't want him to be weak, wimpy. But look at the next verse. The very next verse, Paul says, fight the good fight of, for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. 
He tells them to pursue righteousness and, 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 and all those things and pursue gentleness, pursue meekness. And in the very next uh, verse, he says to fight the good fight. Because meekness, according to what the Holy Spirit produces in us, it's not weakness. Never think that just because somebody categorizes you, labels you as somebody that's, that's meek, that, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a negative thing. We need to, to, to be meek and mild and humble in, in how we operate. It's not a negative thing. Somebody who is meek is not, not uh, uh, according to the world, they don't think that that person would fight. But Paul is telling Timothy to fight the good fight for the faith. He's telling, he's telling them that that's a part of it. Before we started talking about the uh, fruit of the Spirit, we were talking about the fact that we're in a warfare. We have to fight. And meekness is a, it's a part of it because you need to be able to be humble. You need to be able to, to be a mild temper. To be able to, to gently instruct somebody. The world tells us to be hard, to look out for me, myself, and I. The world tells us that if you're meek and gentle, even kind, and people are going to run over you. We've got to, as believers, we've got to throw that out. Because if we, if we accept that, if we accept that thinking, that if we've if we, we, we got to be hard in our business dealings, in our relationship dealings, in, in every aspect of our life, if we adopt that as our way of thinking, then guess what you won't do? You won't be a blessing to somebody just because. We have that. We 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 we've had an experience like that where where uh, somebody was asking for for you know a monetary blessing and and we we simply bless them and you bless them and you let it go. But if you're thinking the, like the world is thinking, then you're gonna you're gonna be thinking you know uh, that people are trying to get over on you. And even if the Holy Spirit says to do it. You're like, wait a minute, I don't know, I got to be a good steward. Which is true. But if he tells you to, to do something, if he tells you to bless somebody, a meek person will just, will, will be obedient. Because they're not thinking that somebody's trying to get over on them. And even if somebody does do something, guess what? You're blessed by your father for your obedience. You, you obey. In meekness and in gentleness, you obeyed. So you're fine. You're good. You're good. Those who find meekness in God, this is one of the reasons why you're strong. Because you have the most powerful person living in you. Wow. Because this is the kind of fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. Right? It's all about, we, we, we always start these messages talking about the Holy Spirit. We have to, because it's Him that produces the fruit. So if you have meekness, you're not weak. Not the meekness that the Holy Spirit produces. You're not weak because you have the most powerful person ever in the world living in you. The Holy Spirit lives in us. He's the one who enables us to help. It helps us to, to, to do it. So contrary to popular opinion, those who are weak, gentle, mild, soft in their temper, kind, and, and, and gentle, they have more strength than the world could ever imagine. We're called to live another way. We're called to live another way. So bring it down a thousand. Be gentle. We, we, we don't have to be on a thousand a hundred percent of the time. And just just because, because we're, we're afraid that, that people are going to, to get over on us. No, listen, be humble, be gentle, be led by the Spirit, and He'll teach you and He'll lead you what you need to say. Because listen, Think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. 
But before we think about Jesus, let me read this verse. I want to read this verse to you. Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse one says this. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person, what? Gently. You should restore them gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. But you're to restore them gently. That, that's, that's why meekness is needed. We don't got to be on a thousand, you know, when, when some, we, ca we catch somebody in sin. Oh, God's going to get you. And, and, and you, you're going to hell. You know what? Uh, uh, love them through it. Have a meek attitude uh, 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 about you while you're gently trying your best to restore that person. That can go a long way. That can go a long way. You, you, you don't you don't have to you don't have to, to to be ready at all times to, to bash somebody to get them. There is a place for the boldness that we need to have. Think about Jesus. Think about his, his life and, and, and his ministry. Jesus was 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 meek and gentle with the sinners. Those people who needed him most, the, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, those who were who, who 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 were lost, he was gentle with them. He ate with them. He dined with them. And Jesus is meek. He's our example of somebody who is meek. And at the same time, he was extremely had, had heated conversations with the Pharisees, those proud people who were trying to trip him up. He had boldness to, 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 to deal with them in a way that, 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 that stopped them cold in their tracks. But he was me. But he knew, he knew when to, to, to use that power. You know, the thing about Jesus that's interesting to me is that he had all authority and all power. We would agree with that, right? He had all authority and all power because he was God in the flesh. And there was a time when, when, right before Jesus was arrested, one of the men that were with him drew a sword and cut off the ear of the high priest's slave. Cut his ear off. And in Matthew, the 26th chapter, the first part of verse 52 says this. Jesus just simply says, put away your sword. He said, put it away. We, we, we don't need this uh, right now. And then verse 53 says this. Don't you realize I could ask my father for a thousand, uh, a thousand angels to protect us, for thousands of angels to protect us, and he will send them immediately. But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? Look at what Jesus is saying. He has all that power available to him. He has access to all of that power. All thousands of angels that can deal with these, these few 30 or however many men that came to, to arrest him. He had thousands of angels at his disposal. And could have, and could have, could have said one word and they would be there instantly, immediately to handle his light work. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. Jesus is our example of meekness in action. Because even though he was all powerful, he submitted to the will of God. And the, and the will of God was, was uh, uh, so that, that for him to, to, to go to the cross. And Jesus says it so that the scriptures will be fulfilled. He had the power, but he didn't use it. <clears throat> it didn't matter that he looked weak at that time. It didn't matter that he looked defeated at that time. It looked like the enemy won because they arrested him. They, they took him away. It looked like. But Jesus wasn't concerned. Get this, because this trips us all up sometimes. Jesus was not concerned by what people thought. He wasn't concerned by what it looked like. Because he knew who he was. He knew that he had a, 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 an assignment to fulfill. He knew what the mission was. 
And so he wasn't concerned that it looked like he was defeated at this time. The other disciples were. That's why they dispersed and, and left him and deserted him. They thought it was over. Jesus wasn't concerned about that. In his, in his, his gentleness, his meekness, he went on and did what God wanted him to do, knowing what the end was going to be, knowing that he would be victorious of all, of all his, his enemies. So in Ephesians 4, chapter Verse 2, listen, look at what Paul says. He says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. We, 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 we got we to gotta, uh, pray as we're praying for the, the fruit of the Spirit. Don't forget about meekness. Don't listen to what the world says about meekness. I, I once read, I once read that meekness is might and power that has been restrained. It's might and power that has been restrained, just like Jesus. He's a meek person. He had all that power, but he 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 he, he restrained himself. It, meek, uh, meekness is, is not it's not about giving power up, but rather deliberately containing that power for the good of other people. And listen, that's where self-control comes into place. Self-control comes into place. Just as Jesus had power that he could have used, he exercised restraint and self-control to stay in the will of God. Self he, 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 he exercised self-control. Self-control is the last of the, of the nine fruit of the Spirit listed. But make no mistake, it's, 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 it's extremely important. It's, it's important because uh, self-control is the ability to control yourself. Self-control means that you have that, that, that you're able to say no to the desires of the flesh, to exercise moderation, and to remain in control. It, 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 even though it's called self-control, it requires us to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's going to help us and pr will produce self-control in us. So, self-control is is, is 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 something that, that, that we all need in our everyday lives. Self-control is, 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 even though, like I said, it's the last of the nine fruit of the Spirit, you really need self-control to, to do at least five of them, right? Five of the other fruit. It requires a dependence upon the Holy Spirit. But, but look at this. It takes self. It takes great uh, a great deal of self-control to practice love. Because you're going to deal with people that are unlovable. And you have to have self-control not to fly off the handle. And continue to love them like the Bible says to love. It takes a great deal of self-control to practice patience. How many can attest to that? Well, those people are getting on your last nerves. And, and, and you, you have to exercise self-control to not give them a piece of your mind. Great self-control in some cases with some people. It takes, it takes self-control to be kind to people that are, that are, that are just unruly and just, just, just kind of mean. Why do I want to be kind to somebody that's, that's mean? Well, if you're led by the Holy Spirit and he's telling you to do so, be kind to him. But it takes self-control for you to, to, to keep your flesh in check because the flesh, I mean, this is just, this is just nature, right? Your, your sinful nature. Flesh wants to do tit for tat. You, you do something to me and you're mean-spirited to me, then my flesh wants to, to, to tell you about yourself. It takes self-control to, to, to be able to keep that in, in check. It takes self-control to, 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 to be good towards somebody. It takes self-control to be gentle, to be meek. You, it, it takes self-control for you to exercise all these fruit of the Spirit while you're in the fire or going through a storm. It takes self-control. It takes self-control discipline to, to stay focused on God. Discipline to stay focused on Jesus. Self-control is, is it's, 
It's as important as any other fruit. And we need self-control in our lives. We need self-control to, to, to not overeat. We need self-control to, 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 to not overexert ourselves. We need self-control to, to do what God has called for us to do. Look at what Proverbs, the fifth chapter, verses 28 says. It says, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Back in the Bible days, that's what they did. They, they, they built their city and they fortified the city by building a, a huge wall all around the city. But a city with broken down walls uh, would be exposed and defenseless. It could be attacked by multiple enemies in multiple places along the broken down wall all at the same time. So you have multiple attacks by different enemies. So you got one, one person that, that, that is working this nerve over here and then you got another person that's bringing bad news from over here. And then you got another person that's, that, that, that's, that's just off that rocker over here. And they're all just kind of coming at you. And, and because you have broken down walls, they're attacking. And guess what? When they come in, because of your broken down walls, because you don't have self-control, you're going to tell that person off. You're going to dismiss this person. And you're going to tell that person where they can go. All because we don't exercise, we don't have self-control. And the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in us is self-control. You don't have to go off. You want to, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Without self-control, listen to this, without self-control, you are vulnerable, defenseless against the attacks and temptations of the enemy. Y'all have heard me say this uh, several times. I want us to win more than we lose. Y'all remember hearing me say that? that that's my prayer for, for, for our, our church, for our group. I want us to win more than we lose. Satan's attacks are many, and he's relentless, and he's not going to let up. But with the Lord's help, you can conquer temptation with the fruit of self-control. You can do what God wants you to do. You can, you can, you can, you can become who He wants you to be if you exercise self-control with the Spirit's help. We can walk. In weakness, humbleness, gentleness. That's what he, he, he can, he'll, he'll help us to do that. I always say this, the Holy Spirit does his job well. He does his job well. We just fail to be good employees. It's us. It's not him. He's telling us, he's leading us, he's guiding us. We just don't do right. But with God, with His Spirit, we can. We can, we can, can be meek, humble, mild, and we can have self-control. Amen?